Hello, welcome to Editing in Context, another one of my CAD mini tutorials. So first of all, I have this document here, and uh, you're going to be copying this document today. I actually have it, I'll put the link in the description, but you can also go to your, um, if you go to your documents page once you log in, and then type in this name, uh, FRC 4272 Entree Mini Lesson Editing in Context. You can probably find it there as well. So anyways, once you find this document, it should look like this, and there'll be three lines up here, and then you'll click on that and just click Copy Workspace. So now you'll have your own copy, and you can just leave the copy on the end or you can put your name on it, whatever you want to do. So wait for that to load. In order to make a part studio in context, which I'll explain what that means in a second, you need to go to the assembly because you can only make part studios in context of an assembly. And you'll insert the plate here. So you always need to make an assembly before you can do anything in context. And the hex shaft is for later, just kind of a little uh, refresher on mating. So now you go to the top right of the assembly toolbar and click on the button that looks like a part studio symbol with a plus sign, and that is create part studio in context. And it'll ask for an origin, just select the origin right there and then just click the green check mark. So when a part studio is created or edited in context, it means that a see-through version of your assembly shows up in your part studio. You can use geometry from your assembly, so say you wanted to use exactly how big these circles were, you can do that. Um, in many cases, you can just duplicate a part studio and make a new, part, a new part from there, or you can just replicate it in an assembly. It just depends on what you're wanting to do. It would actually probably be easier for this specific part, since we're making something that looks so similar. You can just replicate the part studio and go from there. But for the purposes of the lesson, we're going to say that it would be easier to edit in context. So obviously, first of all, you'll want to um, rename this. So just something like that, plate in context. So now you will create a new sketch. And I just like to use the top plane generally. And you can also click on the surface of this, but I just prefer to use top plane. So then, of course, you click on your little cube here. And um, you can, so how you use geometry is you click on a part. In this case, I want to use the outer edges first. And when you click on the, a face like this, it'll just use the outer edges. So the use button is up here, but you can also just press U which is a keyboard shortcut and on shape. So now you have this. You didn't need to re-dimension it or anything. It's just there. Now you can use the individual features. So let's say we just need these four circles in the corner instead of all of those circles. You can just select those and then press U again. And let's say we hit the green check mark. But then say you accidentally hit this little X or you leave the tab and it needs to refresh for some reason and you didn't save your sketch and now it's not in context at all. So if you click that, which you don't have to do, I'll just show you. But oh no, your little see-through thing is gone. Maybe you're not done editing. Maybe you needed an extra hole in here or somewhere. Well, you can also insert sketches into an assembly. And if so, if you go to your assembly and then go to insert, you can click this little button here, which adds sketches to your options of what to insert. And it doesn't matter if it inserts like right on the face of the plate where you had it, because when you have a context, um, it always, it'll always be in the same context, no matter whether you move it in the assembly or not. So say I 
had a plate early on and edited it in context, and then I changed a bunch of stuff in the assembly. If you right clicked and then went to context one, which I'll probably show you later, um, then it'll still look like it was in that original assembly, unless you select update context, which in many cases you might not want to do. So now you'll right click and see it has edit in context and update in context. So you'll want to go back to context one and it should bring back this little see-through thing here. So now it brings you back to sketch one. And depending on whatever happened, you can just continue editing in context. Maybe you needed a couple of these, but then you can just click the green check mark and be on your way. So then you can extrude this sketch and extrude it to the same thickness as this other plate. So I'm actually going to X this for a second. You can also, since it's three dimensional, you can actually look at different measurements in the in context part. So you can see that this is a quarter of an inch thick. So now we're going to extrude sketch one and just go 0.25. And you'll click that. And of course you'll want to rename your part and since there's only one part in this part studio, you'll just name it plate in context. And now, here's the fun part about editing in context. You can just insert and go to assembly. It kind of automatically inserts it for you. And then you'll have to select the items you want to insert, and then you'll just click the check mark. So now you have you still have this sketch in here. You can just go ahead and delete that if you uh, had to insert it in any way to get your context back. So now, as you can see, you have these two in your assembly. What you can do now is just take this hex shaft and you'll actually want to put it in, in there four times. You could use the replicate feature like I showed you on another tutorial, but in this case these holes are all the same size, so you'd actually have to delete. You'd actually have to delete a bunch of hex shafts off of all of these, so it would probably actually be more work instead of just doing each individual fasten. So now you'll just mate these, and I don't know why they inserted quite like that, but that's all right. So you'll just make sure the little icon thing is in the middle. And this green check mark up here, it finishes stuff like normal. But if you click the green check mark in this little menu, it actually starts a new mate of the same kind. So it makes it just a little more efficient, depending on what you want to do. So we'll go ahead and do this. And editing in context can actually get kind of confusing because a lot of people just kind of create a new context every time they want to edit in context. And sometimes you get confused on which context is what. And I don't think you can name them. I'll have to look into that. And then sometimes if you accidentally update a context, it can mess a lot of geometry up depending on how you have stuff placed in your assembly. So once we've done four of these on here, you really only need to do one of these to one of the corners because then it'll be fixed in place. And what I mean by that is just you only need you don't need to remate this four times to the other plate because now it's all the mates are all already in place. So in something like this, obviously this is not how it's going to end up, but there's this little solve button. So you can just see how it looks before you actually decide to finish the mate. 
So now you should have something that looks at least somewhat like, like this. You might have, you know, this on top and this on bottom or whatever, like that. And then you should be able to just drag this around and nothing should come apart. You can also edit parts in context when they already exist in an assembly. You don't have to create a new part in the assembly. Like if I put this in here and then said edit in context, then I could do that as well. And that would create a new context. So, thank you for watching.